Morning VC, uh, Monday morning. Uh, it's Labor Day weekend here in Melbourne today, so uh, day off. Just got back from a 50k ride, which has been nice. Uh, triple espresso, I reckon this is. Magnificent. I, I swore to myself that I would never, I would never drink on camera. But um, how could I resist? This coffee is magnificent. Straight after a ride, superb. All right, let's get into it. I've got a mixed bag, um, some stuff that I've been playing over the last week, and some new stuff in there as well that I want to share. So um, let's get straight on into it. This came from the uh, from the collection. Played this last night. Uh, Jane Brackeen, Ancient Dynasty. Um, this this is a some cheap heat, as uh, Dave Wayne likes likes to say. Uh, picked this up many years ago at a local store for like eight bucks or something like that. Uh, Joanne, did I say Jane? It's Joanne Brackeen. Uh, plays piano. Eddie game. Eddie Gomez on bass. Um, it's an all-star cast here. Uh, Jack DeJohnette on drums and fabulous Joe Henderson on sax. Um, this really really cooks. Um, if you find it cheap, grab it. Excuse me. It's a really swinging set. Um, uh, the focus is on the piano here. Uh, the times where uh, Henderson does come in, for me, it doesn't take the spotlight like he does on other records, which is okay. Because again, I guess this is not his record. Um, jo Joanne's the star on this record, and it's beautifully played. Um, really, really nice up tempo jazz um, with a nice uh, sort of groove. Recorded in 1980. Um, yeah, a wonderful release. Uh, I got this the the other week, a couple of weeks ago now, maybe two or three weeks ago. Neil's from The Bells. A face only a mother could love. I think I showed this on my stream, but it had more chance to, uh, or more time to, to give it a spin and, and um, absorb it all. Uh, a solo piano. Um, it's a marvellous piece, it really, really is. Uh, I was going to compare it to uh, Satie. It's nothing like that, but to me it has all the mastery and martistry and uh, has all the, the hallmarks of a great solo piano record. It's timeless music. Um, I love it. It's fabulous. Played this the other the other morning, maybe Saturday morning. Tori Amos under the pink. Got this from the collection. Had this for years. Um, this is the original 1994 pressing on uh, pink Atlantic. Is it 94? Something like that. To me, this is when Tori Amos was at her best. Um, around this period anyway, up to the sort of mid to late 90s. Um, I think she's fallen away over the last few years, unfortunately. But, um, sensational record. Smashed this out the other week. Or so the, the last few days, I should say. I think Saturday afternoon I played this Rollins band, The End of Silence, the original pressing from Imaggio, Germany. Um, again, to me, this is where this band peaked. Um, their next album, The Wait, for me wasn't wasn't anywhere close to what this is. Um, and it, to be honest, it all comes down to the bass player Andrew Wise. He is the uh, the driving force of this record. His distorted tone, his groove. I have a feeling that he went on and played with Ween after this, after this album. He left after uh, he left this band after this album. Um, produced by Andy Wallace uh, with engineering mix consultant, 
and rock juicer Theo Van Rock. Theo Van Rock was Roland's band's live engineer, and um, he got in there and I guess helped engineer this record. And it really does have that live feel. I do have uh, the album where it has the the demos of or the demos of this album or the the, the tracks, the demo tracks of this album. God, I'll spit it out. Um, and you can see the feel the progression from from that to this. Uh, the the sound of this record is sensational. The drums sound awesome. Uh, you really feel the skins, and uh, the, the the bass for me is is where it's it's his distorted tone is sensational. Uh, Killer tracks, superb album. Thought I'd give this a spin as well. Michael White, Spirit Dance, Spiritual Jazz on Impulse. Um, as you can see there, Michael White plays violin. Yeah, I'm not a fan of jazz violin, and to be honest, I only just like this. Um, it's a great record, and it's and it's a an impulse classic or a spiritual jazz classic, but I really can't take jazz violin. I can't take Jean Luc. Ponty, whatever his fucking name is, every that often. But um, so this is for me is just a pass. That's a great record. It's 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 really really good. But just that sound of the violin, jazz, I can't take. I really like. I can take I can take solo violin in sort of a classical sense. I can't take it in country, um, and I just take it in this. So it's still very good. Uh, snagged this the other week, Future Sound in London, uh, archived eight. I actually got this back in January, I should say. So it's you know, coming on to coming on to two months. Um, this is released in two thousand and five. I have a feeling this is just uh, tracks that um, that have never been released and things like that from the Future Sound in London over the years. Um, in incredible band for me. Um, for me, uh, an electronic an electronic outfit that have actually remained consistent in their uh, output over the years since the early 90s, since like 91, and they're still putting out stuff today. It's not as popular as it was back in the 90s, but for me, the um, it's just as strong. Um, superb. I uh, snagged this at my local store a few weeks ago. George George Reese and Antonio uh, Zepidi. I think that's how it is. Anyway, I'm not even going to try say that uh, Spanish name there. Both Mexican artists, I believe, uh, recorded in Mexico in 1996. Um, released last year. Uh, as a reissue from the in the UK, um, best way to describe this, uh, recorded in '86, I believe. Yes, so originally released in '86. So it's like a a new age ambient tribal type of thing. It does have that sort of um, Spanish feel, or sort of you can say sort of an Inca feel. It has that sort of tribal element. A lot of drums, synthetic drums, um, sort of synth pads over the top. This is a great record. This is really, really, really good. Side two for me is where the, the magic happens. Um, would love to get an original. I just found this this pressing a little bit flat on the dynamic front. It sounds really nice, really nice bass and things like that. Just doesn't have the snap. Maybe an original should have. Um, originals aren't that expensive, so might have to upgrade one day. Thought I'd give this a spin. Haven't played this in ages. A winged victory for the sullen. I believe this is self-titled. Yeah, it is. On a raised tapes, um, some sort of a, a modern classical um, uh, sort of. Uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, it's a popular record in the scheme of things <laughs> from this label. Um, really, really nice. Uh, a lot of solo piano and then some strings over the top of that. 
Uh, really nice to play on a on a morning. I don't know what else to say. I just played this the other night, just before I went out. Um, Charles Wright and the Watts. And the Watts 103rd, 103rd Street Band. You're so beautiful. Um, has Express Yourself Part 2. Yeah, not as good as Part 1. Um, really nice soul record. You know, really nothing to brag about here. Just a standard sort of uh, sort of funk soul record. Got me in the mood. Uh, got me in a good mood before I went out the other evening. Oh, geez, I've got some classics. I uh, pulled this out of the shelves the other the other night. Left field, leftism. This is an absolute masterpiece. Debut record by the band on Hard Hands. Uh, this is the uh, the three LP. Original pressing from 98, maybe, 97. I got this a few years ago, and I'm talking like maybe three or four. But I've had the CD since maybe the early 2000s or late 90s, um, and I remember playing the CD to death. Uh, it's got some killer tracks on here, especially uh, Open Up with um, Johnny Lydon, uh, Release the Pressure, these are some big songs on this. Uh, the, the great thing about this record, what I love about it, is it's got the, the bang and techno tracks and then the next tracks sort of comes back a bit and it's either sort of a dub feel or a just a down tempo kind of feel, so they don't sort of smash you for for three album for three LPs. Um, if you like electronic music and you don't have this, you don't like electronic music. Simple as that. Uh, I grabbed both of this band's reissues. Um, this kind of punishment. This is reissued on um, Superior Viaduct. Uh, I know James Buttery does have originals there, a New Zealand band, uh, originals uh, released on Flying Nun back in 84. Um, best way to describe this music, it's, it's, it's indie rock, but it's not really rock as such. It's more sort of an art rock, a lot of sort of um, solo piano and sort of uh, soft voice. Um, and sort of uh, weird noises sort of after that. Um, amazing stuff. I, I really didn't know what to expect um, until I saw uh, Superior Viaduct were going to reissue it. So I had a quick listen online. Um, this is fantastic. Really, really good. I've got their other one here, which I'll show in, a, in another video as well. Uh, I recommend this highly. If you like um, Sonic Youth and, and bands like that, this is it isn't like Sonic Youth, but you'd appreciate this um, if you if you sort of like that sort of stuff. Anyway, is that coffee's going down well? Oh, got to give this a spin. Haven't spun this in ages. Spinal Tap. No, it's not. It's a uh, twenty-four black carrot. Uh, gone. The promise. Of the promises of yesterday. This is the Numero reissue of this record, Numero uh, number 25. Um, 24 Black Carrot were uh, a funk soul ensemble. I think this is released back in, say, 74, 73. Um, but reissued back in 2009. Um, Sounds okay, a little bit noisy. I've had this for a few years now. Um, absolute classic funk soul record. Recommended highly. It's a shame they changed the artwork, but I think that's what uh, Numero does. Thought I'd give this a spin as well. Vangelis Soil Festivities. Really, really nice record. Um, as you can see here, sort of, sort of... Um, 
nature shots on there and it does have a lot of um, sort of field recording type of feel to it. Uh, great ambient record, recommended highly. I think it came out in 84 maybe. Um, yeah, really, really good. This is an original UK press, sensational. So I want to give this a spin as well. Chico Freeman, Kings of Mali, uh, released in 1978 on India Navigation. Uh, Cecil McBee on bass, Anthony Davis on piano. They're, they're the two main, um, I guess, two known players on this. Excuse me. Uh, side one's okay. For me, side two is where, where it all happens. Uh, a nice jazz album. Uh, but I do like this guy. I really have got a few of his albums and I really appreciate what he does. I showed this during the... Um, uh, during my uh, live stream a couple of weeks ago. The Tropical Drums of Deutschland compiled by Jan Schult. Uh, released on Music for Dreams in Denmark. Uh, if you don't like comps, just buy this. This is an absolute masterpiece of a comp. Really well put together. As the title says, most of the tracks feature percussion. Um, it's And it's uh, German artists or, or artists that recorded in Germany in the 80s. Um, a lot of it's uh, sort of new age or um, world music feel. Just get it for track two on side B, Sansa. Um, the originals of that album, are, there's only one for sale on Discogs and it's like 200 bucks. It's just stupid. Um, but you can get one song off this and it's amazing. This is a really, really good comp. This is an absolute 10. Um, the pressing sensational. Uh, the mastering is superb. They've just done uh, an amazing job on this comp. Recommend this highly. It's it's uh, really a masterwork. So happy to finally snag this at a decent price. Um, Steve Wright drumming, music for mallets, mallet instruments, voices, or and organ, six pianos. This is the original pressing on Deutsche Grammophon. Um, what is it, a three album box set or something like that. Um, an absolute masterpiece of a recording. Uh, so glad to have it. I just actually love the way how each record sort of progresses the way through. So the drumming starts on record one and it sort of goes through to the melody instruments and then to the voices. It's, I love that progression between each LP. Uh, beautifully played, like I've said before with the Steve Reich that I've shown in the last couple of videos, that it seems very mechanical and I can't believe that musicians are playing this because it's just so hypnotic and so perfect um, and so repetitive, but it's so, um, it's, it's repetitive but it keeps your attention for some reason. Uh, sensational. Oh, geez, I bought this back when I was first getting into jazz. I reckon I got this maybe in the early 2000s or something like that. And I got it for six bucks at a local store. Nothing to brag about. Chet Baker, Chet is back. This is a French pressing on RCA, a French reissue on RCA. I think it's like a late 70s reissue. Um... I have a feeling recorded maybe 62 originally. Um, you know, there's some, uh, it's just straight up jazz. Nothing, nothing adventurous, nothing to make you stand up. But you know what? After a long day at work, just put this on and make your dinner as background music. Does the job. Nearly there. Dave Belson showed this sometime last year, I think, or a couple of years ago. And since that day, I've been on a hunt for this record. 
because I could not believe that uh, Freddie Hubbard actually made a record like this. Uh, I was actually intrigued initially by the cover. I just didn't know. I didn't know anything about it. Hadn't seen it before. Hadn't seen it in a store. Hadn't seen it posted until that day, until Dave showed it. And it's uh, it's music composed and realised by Ilhan uh, Migaroglu. Sounds Turkish. I believe, I believe he's a Turkish avant-garde classical composer. Um, this is as the most adventurous and the most artistic Freddie Hubbard record I've ever heard. Um, it has got some uh, some sort of tape loops going on. It's got some uh, some voice samples, if you want to call them that, some spoken word. Um, this is an absolutely fantastic record. Um, it's, it's Freddie Hubbard sort of uh, pushing the boundaries, but it's a mixture of that sort of contemporary classical and jazz throughout it. Um, it's, it is truly a masterwork. Uh, so happy to grab it. Oh, I'll show you the label. It's a, it's a Japanese pressing. Blue Atlantic. Look at that. Absolutely superb. Uh, and it's a minty, minty, minty pressing as well. Minty copy, I should say. Look at that. Mint. So, uh, yeah, really happy to find this. And lastly, Tero Masahino, Taro's Mood, recorded live at the... Uh, the Dom Domicile, the Domicile Enja Records or Enya Records. Um, this is a Japanese press recorded in 73, might have been released that same year or 74. Love this record. And it's such a great mix of, he chucks in a little bit of free jazz, gets a little bit spiritual, gets a little bit sort of just straight up, you know, hard bop. Uh, I really love this guy. Um, sensational playing, all Japanese artists right through. Um, yeah, superb record. Recommend it highly. Uh, that's all I've got. I'll probably be doing another video next week or so. We'll see what happens. Um, but I, I do like showing what I've been playing during the week and mixing up with new stuff that I got. So uh, thanks, VC. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, all that jazz, yada, 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 bye-bye.